Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, looks like we've got a good group to get started, Reverend Haynes. Um, yeah. And I want to officially welcome everyone and, and open uh, the meeting uh, and pass it over to our chairman, uh, Anthony Haynes, Reverend Anthony Haynes. Welcome everyone for joining us for this Masters for Manufacturing meeting and let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come together to meet about the Masters for Manufacturing's business. Pray to God that your hand will be in this meeting and in our business that we're taking care of today and that all that are on this line will be blessed. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Uh, so let us take a moment to uh, go around the, uh, the Zoom room. And uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, uh, your title, your church or organization, and um, a little bit about uh, why, why you're in the meeting. You want to assign people, Reverend Haynes, or, or? Let's start off with Pastor Meeks. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Pastor Donald Meeks, pastor of First Choice Outreach Ministries at 2705 East 83rd Street in the city of Chicago. Um, I'm privileged to be a part of this venture. Anytime um, it's something dealing with our youth, especially with all the things that's going on with our youth, uh, I want to be a positive help in whatever capacity that uh, I could be helpful in. And even though I don't see you personally, um, I just want to say hello to everybody. Thank you. Uh, David, I can't see who's all on the line. So, you have uh, Fa chance. Father Larry, why don't I turn it over since you have a group there? I will try to turn it toward the people that are going to be introducing themselves. So, I'm uh, Father Larry Dowling, uh, pastor at St. Agatha Catholic Church in North Lawndale. Um, starting my 16th year. Um, the um, uh, the reason I'm, I'm part of this is because, uh, you know, so much of our uh, efforts are to, you know, to fortify people, um, you know, uh, in their both physical and economic well-being, but but also their spiritual and emotional well-being. And so um, to really try to, uh, you know, and, and the dignity of jobs is so important for especially our young men and, and women. So um, so that's that's where my passion lies is trying to you know kind of help empower um, help uh, build that sense of, uh, you know, dignity and, and self-esteem for those who, uh, you know, uh, seek employment. And I'll turn it over to. Hello, my name is Darren Stas. Uh, I'm a seminarian I'm studying for the Diocese of Rockford. I'm in my second of six years in seminary. Um, and yeah, I'm here uh, just kind of learning uh, about the community here, um, learning what Father Larry does to help out in the community. And yeah, um, looking forward to learning about this program and how it benefits others. I'm Matthew McCarowitz. I'm from Gaylord, Michigan, also studying uh, with Darren and the rest of the group here at the seminary. Uh, I'm in my first year of seminary and uh, yeah, so far so good. good. Deacon Richard Rivera from the, uh, Tucson, Arizona. I'm in my last year of seminary getting ordained this summer. So you're pretty close to walking on water at this point? <laughs> <laughs> if I step outside, I can walk on it right now. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> good, good response. <laughs> my name is Grant. I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Thank you for having us. Seminary Michael Janorowski. I'm in my second year of pre-theology. I am also studying for the Diocese of Rockford. Good to be with you guys. All right. And that is all of us. Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, since we, Rockford came up a couple of times, I want to, I thought I saw Pastor Dotson on. Pastor, if you're there, can you say hello and introduce yourself? Um, looks like you're muted, Pastor. I wonder if he's he's hearing us. Well, while he's getting 
What do you say? We'll come back to them. Yeah, we'll swing back. But uh, let's uh, not forget the esteemed uh, uh, co-chair of Will County, uh, Pastor Brooks. Good morning, gentlemen and ladies if online. Uh, my name is Herbert Brooks, Jr. I am the pastor of the St. John Baptist Church way out in Joliet. I'm also an elected Will County Board of Commissioners here for Will County. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good to see you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, Reverend Dotson, can you can you talk? Because I want to make sure I get through my uh, my clergy first before we get to to the others. <clears throat> you're uh, you're on mute. It looks like, Pastor. It's a little red. It's the uh, speaker with the with the cross at the bottom on the speaker. Just hit that. Yeah, it looks like he's on his phone. It might be tricky on the phone. Well, we'll. Uh, I'm sure he'll figure it out. Uh, let's move on. Um, uh, 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 Michelle and Andy, uh, why don't you two uh, report in, please? Sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Burris, and I'm at. Uh, the Century Foundation nonprofit policy think tank, and we do a lot of work with manufacturing renaissance. And so excited to be here in a professional capacity and a personal capacity, excited to be here as well. Um, been around kind of ministry development, um, particularly during my undergrad years. And so just excited to really, and did some interfaith work. And so excited to be here with all of you and to learn how I can get further involved. Thank you, Andy. And I'm uh, Andy Stenner. I'm a senior fellow here at the Century Foundation. And like Michelle, I'm in Washington, D.C. Great. And we're going to hear a little uh, more from both of them uh, when we get to the section about what's happening uh, in Congress and with the various bills that are that are working their, their way through that we have a role in. Um, we have a, a guest from JARC, uh, Jane Adams Resource Corporation. Uh, Ma, is it Mari or Madi? It's Madi. Madi. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so again, my name is Mari Zapata. I'm with Jane Adams Resource Corporation. I'm actually sitting in for Liz who had some um, travel issues, um, but happy to be here. Um, JARC has partnered with Manufacturing Rena Renaissance for quite some time now. Um, so we offer manufacturing training at three of our locations in the Chicagoland area. Uh, so here really just to continue, you know, working with the community to recruit, um, for our programs and you know let folks know that there is you know great opportunities in manufacturing thank, thank you, you so much Mari. Uh, yeah. our very own dd Dee Dee jones is is on dd Dee Dee jones industry coordinator with manufacturing renaissance responsible for exposing the youth to careers in manufacturing as well as getting the word out to uh, manufacturers that we have a training program preparing the youth for careers in manufacturing. Um, I am here today to talk about the training that we have, and I'll share more about that a little later. Happy to be here. Good morning. Thank you, Didi. So both Madi and Didi are going to share a bit about two variations on training that I think will be useful for your congregations and some of the young folks you work with. Uh, can't forget my friend and a former board chair of 100 Black Men uh, and, and also business owner and just all around wonderful brother, uh, Carl Tutt. Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, David. Thank you so much. I'm Carl Tutt. I'm the immediate past board chairman for 100 Black Men in Chicago. And we have been uh, working with uh, David uh, over the last few years, and we see ourselves as a support organization to what manufacturing renaissance is working to accomplish and as we go through uh, creating more jobs and opportunities for the youth uh, in the Chicagoland area. So thanks for, for having me, David. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Carl, for joining. Uh, Brother Darnell, um, please introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Darnell Sapp. I am the uh, my time supervisor over here in Lawrence Hall, and I am standing in for the vice president of our operations and program managers, um, Brianna Holly. Great. Welcome. Thanks for have, uh, for coming aboard. I'm saving Craig for last, Craig Friedman, since he's going to do a little bit of a presentation. But I think we covered everyone. Did I miss anyone? Oh, uh, Pastor Shaw. Yes, Bishop Shaw here of the Lively Stone Apostolic Church. 
south side of Chicago, West Pullman area. It's certainly a pleasure to come on this morning to be a part of the manufacturing renaissance uh, in West Pullman. We are concerned uh, of our uh, economic development in that area as far as homes being renovated and jobs being provided for individuals in that area. So we're, we're excited to be on in, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. I had the pleasure of meeting with uh, Pastor and, and several of his colleagues a few weeks ago, uh, and I was introduced to them by Gus Redman, who was also on the call. Gus, can you say something for us? Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm not a preacher, so that's the reason he had me to hang out until the end. <laughs> Great. So, but uh, but uh, I do I do think in that trend based on trying to help people, especially the youth. But uh, this program here is so desperately needed uh, to try to help with everything with bringing up the people that's going to be getting involved as, far as the manufacturing operations. And my position is I'm working under uh, Mr. Robinson to try to bring the right type of people, business-wise and pastors, so that everybody is like-minded to move forward. Excellent. And and thank, thank you, Gus. And, and never work under me, man. We work next to each other. Dude. <laughs> um, so uh, let's, uh, let's jump right into the program. I think we covered everyone. Uh, Pastor Dotson, I'll give you one more chance. Are you able to, uh, to introduce yourself? Oh, and we have one, one other person too. Yeah, Pastor Dotson's having some tech issues there. Uh, we had someone just join us. Please, please introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Binion, the CEO and president of the Westside Ministers Coalition. Oh, welcome, Dr. Binion. Good to see you. Thank Good you for coming. Good to see coming. you as well. Uh huh. So uh, let's jump right in. Uh, I want to first remind everyone what the mission of the organization is and a little bit about how, how we came to be. Before I do that, I'll introduce myself. For those that, that may not have met me, I'm David Robinson, a uh, longtime activist. I've uh, been doing this work in community for you know as long as I can remember. And I was fortunate to run into Dan Swinney in this operation uh, after I had left the Black United Fund of Illinois um, when our, uh, our leader, uh, Henry English, passed and uh, was kind of wandering in the wilderness, so to speak. Uh, and, and Dan and I connected, uh, and he's been doing this work for 40 plus years. And I believe he's right that manufacturing is the best pathway to redirect and build our communities uh, it's, there's low hanging fruit, there are jobs available. We're right in the middle of a tremendous window. You're gonna hear more about it from Andy and Michelle. Uh, I think this is our moment and we have to take advantage of it. Um, and I think ministers play a huge role. Um, and just to read the mission, Ministers for Manufacturing is the committee of the Chicagoland Manufacturing Renaissance Council. Uh, it seeks to engage the faith community, promote manufacturing as a tool for social inclusion and community development. So it isn't, um, Dan and I like to say it isn't that we are so necessarily enamored with manufacturing on its face by itself. We are enamored with manufacturing because we think it's the best, best pass, pathway to rebuild our communities. And we're a community development organization that happens to believe in that fact that manufacturing is the path. So we have um, done a lot of work in this space and we've got some exciting things we want to share with you. So I'm going to get off of this page and open the screen up a bit and introduce um, a longtime partner and a tremendous ally in, uh, in this work that we do. Uh, fourth generation president and CEO of Friedman Seating located over on the west side. Uh, Craig is a member of our executive leadership team for the Chicago Land Manufacturing Renaissance Council. He has hired dozens uh, I'd like to say hundreds, we're working on it, but dozens of our young people at his organization. He has been a real asset to not just the industry, uh, but the community as well. Craig? Thank you. That was a very um, generous um, 
uh, introduction. I appreciate it. And uh, great to meet everyone here. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you can't be at our place today. Hopefully in the near future, you can all come um, here and see for yourselves what, uh, what we have going on right here on, on, on the west side. Um, we've been uh, in Chicago for over 100 years. We've been on the west side of Chicago for 22 years. We're committed to rebuilding this community have been and will always be. Um, and, um, you know, we, we recognize uh, the connection um, between uh, um, jobs and good jobs and youth and, um, and uh, unemployment and, 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 and really uh, bringing a cycle of success. And so, um, you know, I'm so, um, uh, tickled, I guess that that uh, you know you guys uh, and thankful for what you guys are, are doing and have come together um, uh, to form uh, the, this the, this committee because it uh, it is really um, important. It's useful, and you have the vision um, uh, and are ahead of the curve on this. And um, uh, we're really uh, excited about about the work that that you do. Um, you know, it, it takes a, a a group, an ecosystem, and you know, with we we've been working for a long time with Manufacturing Connect. Um, we've been working a long time with Jane Adams Resource Corp. In fact, they they have uh, a year ago put a training um, facility uh, within our building, um, which has been helpful for the community and for um, and and for Friedman Seating as well. Um, to give you a little idea of what we do here, um, we make seats for buses and trucks and uh, ferries and, um, and uh, rail transportation. Um, we uh, employ a little bit over 600 people. We have about 50 job openings uh, right now, um, all uh, semi-skilled and skilled positions that, that uh, would be perfect um, for uh, people coming out of uh, programs such as Manufacturing Connect and, and, um, and, and, and Jane Adams. Um, it's been a tough, tough, tough two years. Um, I, I don't need to, for, for all of us, I, I, um, but you know, our business has is, is, is really been uh, hard hit, but we're on our way back right now and, um, and uh, you know, really looking forward to um, embracing um, the community and providing uh, opportunity um, as we, you know, continue to, um, to kind of fight um, ahead here and, and remain viable. Um, the COVID has, uh, you know, hit us, all these supply chain issues that you hear about, the microchip shortages, the, um, the inflation. Uh, we've seen all of that that's, you know, that hit us, but um, we're, we're trying to make a comeback here. And um, we got a little video here to show you what we do. And, and as I said, I, I invite you um, in the near future to come out. I think in, in another uh, two weeks, we'll be uh, relaxing our standards, hopefully a little bit uh, and be able to provide full tours and everything. And, and you'll get a sense, but I think this video will give you a brief introduction and um, we can go from there. And if you have any questions, please feel free to either ask me uh, afterwards or uh, call me and um, email me and, and I'm here. So thank you Great. for all you do. Thank you so much for Craig, for everything you do and then for being at least initially willing to, to, to host us, but things got a little weird there. So we totally understand. Um, and if you wouldn't mind putting in the chat, uh, the best way that everyone can uh, contact you and I'm gonna load up the video. Our company's been in business over 120 years. We trace our roots back to my great-grandfather, Hyman Friedman, who won an honorable mention for his upholstery skills at the World's Fair in 1892. We've become the leaders in the industry uh, based on the uh, great product we put out, delivered on time at a fair price. Friedman Seating operates in many different markets. Basically, we focus though on surface transportation, we specialize in seats for all different types of buses, delivery trucks, paratransit vehicles, the rail market, and in the marine industry. We provide products and our service our customers throughout North.
Unmute yourself, David. Quicker than anyone in our industry provides a lot of flexibility in order for us to meet um, the, the demanding and exacting schedules of our customers. And we're not reliant on other people to, to ship an order on time. We've invested a lot of time in quick response manufacturing initiatives. Uh, basically what it does is it allows us to shorten the lead time to our customers. But we're constantly uh, dedicated to improving our operations here. It allows us to keep our costs down and provide a value product to our customer. Friedman Seating invests a lot of money and time and, and effort into new technologies that helps us uh, improve our quality, shorten our lead times, and make products that we wouldn't be able to without uh, the advanced technology. We're focused on safety and what we need to do to make passengers and riders safe in the, in the vehicles they ride in. A huge part of our uh, focus is on seatbelts and integrating seatbelt systems into our products. Uh, we were uh, one of the leaders in introducing integrated three-point seatbelts to the bus market. It's not required, but we've decided to go that route and produce a safer product for our customers. Quality is, is, is critical, but the most important part is safety. And that is why we work so hard every day in order to, to build a product that, that is going to exceed the federal motor vehicle standards that are required for, for seating. Friedman Seating is an ISO uh, certified company. Uh, additionally, we have an A2LA accredited test lab. What this means is that we're able to test all of our seats either on a platform or in vehicle, uh, assuring customers that the strictest standards are being met and that uh, there's no question about compliance or uh, meeting the, the regulations. We all know that we're only as good as our last shipment. So we have to keep delivering day in, day out and making sure that the customers are completely satisfied. It gives a feeling of uh, one big family and uh, we're out to do the right thing for our customers and for our uh, employees. Outstanding. Thank you. Uh, great before you go to bed tonight, eat one half teaspoon oh. of this before 10 p.m. and electrify Sorry. your metabolism by over 728%. Get Especially if you're over. Okay. Send me the link to that. <laughs> and let me get out of this uh, big thing and get back to where to us. Yeah, all this uh, technology is tricky stuff here. Okay, uh, Craig, thank you, uh, thank you, thank you for everything. Uh, it, it does anyone have any questions of Craig? I also want to thank Craig for joining us and and showing about his company, and he's doing wonderful work, and uh, we're glad to have him, and I'm glad to be on the board with him for the executive committee. Excellent. And David, um, for those of us that way out here in Joliet, Will County, where is that facility located? Help me out. Uh, I, I'll let Craig or Dee Dee okay. answer that because they're okay. they're like, you know, oh. right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are um, on uh, Augusta and Cicero Avenue, which is really uh, sh Chicago Avenue and, mm -hmm. and Cicero. Does that mm -hmm. does that ring a bell for you? Oh yeah, I, I was born in Chicago okay. uh, on the west side, but that was almost seventy years ago. But I remember. <laughs> so to give you some some history, and and probably you you'll you'll remember this. So so we're 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 twenty two years ago. Um, we bought this building out of out of bankruptcy, and it was initially um, Motorola's first manufacturing facility. Um, and uh, it's been after Motorola in, in the early uh, 1900s, it became Play School um, and then one other person. And then we, uh, we, we, we picked it up and, and, and invested uh, um, into, uh, into the facility. So, All right, Craig, thank you, Craig. <laughs> um, I was just you know, over there, of course, to, to prep for this meeting. And I noticed the, uh, it looked like that building that's directly, uh, I want to say north of you, uh, nor northeast of you. It looks like that's still for sale. Or, are you guys like, have any plans for expansion anytime soon? Or are you just, just happy trying to handle what you have at this point? 
Um, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with which one you're speaking of, directly northeast of us. I, I think um, it's northeast of you. Uh, so if you're standing on the, the front steps, uh, looking a little, looking a kind of can of corner, there's a long building over there that used to be for sale. Now, maybe it, it hasn't been purchased yet. Right. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that uh, it, 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 I don't believe it's for sale. And, um, you know, that's part of our... <laughs> Um, our, our, one of our, our problems uh, that we're facing or will be facing very shortly is, um, as, as you know, the, the tax, um, uh, the industrial properties have been, been hit and our taxes are, are scheduled to go up um, four times. And, yeah. um, and so, you know, it's going to be uh, really difficult for us to, um, unless we get something taken care of and some um, reform uh, to really survive that blow and be able to, um, to continue to, to, to prosper here. Um, but back to your question, David, right now, you know, we, um, we need some more space. Um, right now, it's just a matter of capital at this point. Um, we do have some plans, but um, uh, right now we have to get back on our feet. As I said, it's been a, a rough, rough uh, uh, two years. Yeah. Well, they, these are the kind of issues, uh, everyone, that uh, as we talk about a trip to Springfield, possibly an advocacy day, these are the kind of issues that we, we need to, to put in front of our legislators. Um, if, you know, they're, they're taxing times four, that they're threatening to increase property taxes by a factor of four. Uh, and these are the places that our young people are finding these opportunities uh, as uh, other companies, not, not necessarily Friedman, but other ones, we're looking at turning over so that we can have new ownership, inclusive, more diverse new ownership. And that's part of what Andy and Michelle are going to kind of talk about a little bit uh, in their remarks. So, you know, there's some major issues that the power of the voice of the, the, minist the ministerial community really can have some impact on. So as we get into that a little later in, in today's forum, you know, these are the kind of things that we can bring some, you know, let let our legislators know that it's unacceptable for them to overtax the uh, industrial community at the cost of jobs and community development. So anyway, let me not go too far along that that line. But um, this is a great segue, I think, uh, for our industrial coordinator, Dee Dee Jones. Uh, unless there are any other questions for Craig. Craig, I know you're a busy guy, so if you need to pop off, um, thank you so much for your time and, and for your willingness to work with us on these things. Um, and uh, it looks like he had his, uh, his information there in the chat. So if anyone wants to reach out to Craig, please feel free to take a look at the chat box. And, uh, and, and he's always open and been a great partner. Thank you, Craig. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm going to try to hang on as long as I can. I do, I do have something going on at 11, but um, I'm going to listen in the background here. And, and uh, thank you again and have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Didi, I have your flyer. Do you want me to pull that up for you? Yes, please. Okay. So. Okay. All right, so today I just wanna share some information about our training program for our YMA program, um, Young Manufacturers Association. Um, this is a peer-to-peer -peer support group of young adults, 18 to 29, who are out of school, who are working in manufacturing, uh, interested in manufacturing, or training in manufacturing. This is a 10-week um, training program that covers shop math, blueprint reading, hand and power tools, measuring devices, and we offer a NIMS credential, a National Institute for Metalworking Skills uh, credential that is portable. Um, it's a nationally recognized credential. So this person who earns it can take it, you know, just about anywhere and go to work with it. Um, and that's in measurement materials and safety. After the training program is complete, we will teach them job readiness skill, how to dress, how to talk, how to get through difficult situations, how to ask for a job change, a raise, um, how to advance your career, how to enroll into apprenticeship or take additional training. But 
This is a mentoring group, a support group that helps young adults navigate uh, through the life of manufacturing. Our training starts um, at the end of this month, February the 28th. We're gonna meet Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 11 to 12 uh, in the afternoon, and the classes are virtual. We are targeting Austin residents and the Southland residents, uh, any zip code outside of that Southside area zip code. I think the first community is like Calumet Park. Um, we are definitely targeting those folks. That's where our funding is tied. But if you know someone who is interested, just let me know. Uh, we are trying to make a case that everybody needs this program and funding should be across the board, regardless of the community. Um, and Didi, there's a paid training and they get a job is after, a, is that right? Oh yeah, so once the training is complete and we go through the soft skills training, I myself have one-on-one -on -one with the training participants and we create or enhance their resume. We do some job preparedness skills, um, how to interview. I will identify opportunities for the participant to choose from. We will apply for those positions. I'll contact the company, set up the interview, um, help the young person navigate to the interview. But most times I put them in my car and I take them to the interview and take them back home. And then I follow up with the employer as well as the participant. This YMA group is to follow up. The easy part is getting a job. That's, you know, go through the training, you're gonna automatically get a job. That's, that's not the hard part. The hard part is keeping the job. H how to navigate in a manufacturing environment and then life situations. How do we get through life situations that, that may impact our work life? So that's why we created this group so that um, young individuals who, you know, go through the training and earn a job in manufacturing have some support. Um, they have support. They have a set of people um, young, you know, their age as well as our staff members who can help them make some life decisions. And if we are not skilled in the areas where they have the need, we reach out to our community partners, you know, for food, for um, violence, for mental health, things of that nature. So our goal is to keep people going. You know, once you get the job, keep the job and grow within that um, skill set. So if you know someone who can benefit from this uh, training, please <laughs> let me know. Um, we are in our last week of recruiting. I'm actually reaching out to all the folks who attended a info session right now to solidify their spots in the cohort. Um, I will put my email address in the chat if you want a copy of this flyer to share to your congregation. Um, I'll definitely get it over to you. But again, um, we are pressed for time. So um, if folks can, folks who have an interest can um, share that interest mit, with me, I want to say no later than Wednesday. That will be the very last day. Um, please do, please get the word out. BD and follow up from what David was saying too, is it they get a stipend of $100 a week for the online training? Correct. Okay. Correct. So um, they get, it, it, it's, you know, because we have to do it remote. Um, and we, I think we normally paid anyway, DD, even when we were doing it uh, in, in person, but th this is a way to incentivize it a bit and it's starting to work, you know, um, young people like to get that hundred bucks a week in their pocket. So uh, that, that helps keep them in front of the screen. And then once they kind of get their hands around it, uh, we've had great success. Dee Dee is a, astonishing. She's got 100% job placement success, 100%. She can get anybody a job once they go through the training, guaranteed. The, as she said, the trick is helping young people that have many issues and so on and so forth to uh, kind of get navigate life and their issues in order to, to, to begin anew uh, in terms of building a career and, and a presence in, in this industry. Uh, one quick thing. Just want a, a footnote. See the, the photo here, far left, you see this gentleman right here. 
Now, all of our young people are special, but I want to tell a quick story about Raul. Uh, Raul came to us after seven years in, in uh, incar incarcerated seven years as a shooter for one of the Latin gangs. Uh, he decided to try to turn his life around and he did a little construction training and he came to us and, and got involved in our manufacturing program. He is a gentleman who is the epitome of putting the guns down to create a career path and tell the truth to his community about a better way to live. So we're starting to work on this idea of manufacturing pathway as an alternative to gun violence. He's an example of that right there. Is that right, Didi? Absolutely. And the there's two other gentlemen to the right, uh, Terrence and the black and, right and, here, Rakeem, and Rakeem and the gray. Uh, as they were working, they had started well into their manufacturing careers, but um, unfortunately, Rakeem, no reason whatsoever, but he got caught riding around with a gun in his car. He's been working since 2012, since he graduated high school, but, you know, young people do silly things. Um, he's a very positive young man, not in the gangs, you know very uplifting role model in the YMA program, but got caught with a gun in DuPage County because he yeah, lives in we, Woodbridge. <laughs> and we had to drive out there and, and stand in front of the judge on his behalf, which we do for all of our young people. Uh, so he didn't yeah. have to go in. And Terrence, same kind of story. Terrence came to same us story. And he's doing his thing, you know. <laughs> so, so this is a support group to help young people, even, you know, well beyond them being into their career sometimes life just happens and they need help and support so we rally the troops we go into court with our letters of support with from our community from their employers from the YMAers, and we get them off and these two gentlemen didn't spend a day in jail they were able to um get off because of all the support that we were able to provide uh both judges Excellent. Any questions for Dee Dee so we can move the uh, agenda along? I have one, David. Yes, sir. Uh, Dee Dee, um, uh, is it budget constraints why you have such a, uh, uh, I, I guess, a specific circumference that you're staying within? Or if not, why not cash your net out to a larger group covering the city of Chicago and or Cook County? So it is tied to budgets. Our, okay. our funding is coming um, from certain entities who want to invest in the Austin community and the Southland community. We always cast a wide net in hopes to go back to the funder and say, hey, here is the need. You know, here is, these are the zip codes. These are the communities who are showing interest. What can we do to get these folks trained too? Yep. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. That's, mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, Reverend Haynes, real quick. That's yeah, another that's, reason why we can make this point heard to the decision makers and the legislators. They need to know that other communities need this. Yep. I'm sorry, Rev, go ahead. Uh, same thing I was going to say. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, right, but I have great. a question if I can. Yes, sir. Reverend Meeks, does this program stretch into the uh, South Suburban area as well, or are you trying to get it to extend over to the Southern suburban youth, South suburban youth. We do have funding for the Southland. So that's preferable, that's ideal. Our, our funding is tied to the Southland, which is South suburban. I'm, I'm talking about outside of Chicago, South suburban right. and um, Austin. But like I said, we're, we're gonna take, you know, everybody who signs up, who's ready to go. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Any, any other questions? All right. Thank you so much, Dee Dee. Always, you know, wonderful. Uh, uh, the, the work you're doing is, is inspiring and it's really helping. Thank you so much. Um, and since we're limited, we, we want to make sure that we had another program, uh, JARC, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I want to go, let's go national. Uh, it, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce uh, Andy Stetner, who's a fellow, a senior fellow at the uh, uh, Century Foundation. We have worked with the Century Foundation now for many years and they do tremendous work, um, kind of progressive thinking uh, in terms of research and studies and reports. But more than that, they are driving policy at the highest levels, including the White House. 
And Andy is going to kind of give us a report about what's happening on uh, in Congress with the variation on several of the bills that you might have heard about. Uh, Andy, uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to you. So, David, thanks so much. Um, and thanks to Reverend Haynes. Um, we've met before and trips to Chicago uh, and DD. It's great to see everyone. Um, we are honored to support what Manufacturing Renaissance is doing. Um, everyone looks at this committee as a very important example of what should be happening uh, really across the country. Uh, just a faith-based support uh, for the manufacturing sector. So what we've been trying to do at Manufacturing Renaissance, and you may have heard before, we wanted to say, let's take the idea of Manufacturing Renaissance, which is we need to rebuild our industrial core from the ground up, from giving community leaders like yourself, uh, the tools to train workers and redevelop industrial land and bring factories back, and keep the ones you have. Um, and so that was the idea of the National Manufacturing Reinvestment Corporation uh, Act uh, was to establish a set of federally funded uh, manufacturing reinvestment councils um, like Manufacturing Renaissance, um, similar to what we have in NeighborWorks when it comes to housing. Um, and give it the tools for uh, access to capital, uh, for workforce training, uh, uh, industrial retention, uh, and also work on diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, in the industrial sector. Um, so that bill is, it was introduced by Representative Jan Tchaikovsky from Chicago and co-sponsored by a number of other members of Congress, um, like Tim Ryan and Dan Davis. Um, and that was really our message bill. Uh, the great news about that was, you know, when we were able to take that message and kind of attach it uh, to a major piece of legislation that's moving within Congress, a big package. Um, you know, people have woken up to the value of manufacturing when they couldn't get enough masks, uh, you know, for uh, the healthcare workers. Um, we, and now we can't get enough computer chips to get an affordable car. Um, people have realized that we, we should not have sacrificed our manufacturing base, um, and especially at a time when other countries are reinvesting in their technology and manufacturing base like China and others. So there's a big package, one that passed the Senate um, called the U.S. and Innovation and Competition Act, and another bill uh, called America Competes. That's the House version of that bill. Well, that House version uh, includes a lot of our ideas uh, for what needs to happen with manufacturing and technology in it has a program called um, something similar called the Regional Technology Hub Program, which would focus on bringing technology and manufacturing development to those communities that have not benefited from that. And we, and those authors of that bill um, were able to put in some language that was similar to our idea that this should be uh, inclusive of underserved communities. We should be partnering with historically black colleges uh, and universities to develop the next generation of talent. Uh, we should be citing uh, these hubs in those areas that have uh, an underserved community that also have a uh, historically black college or other minority serving institution within it. So that, that our language is in. Uh, the bill ha has passed the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, and now we are trying to push that to completion uh, with the House and the Senate coming together uh, and putting a bill uh, at the Congress's, uh, at, at the President's desk to give you a sense of this. You know, the bill that passed uh, the House is a $7 billion program around regional economic development and technology manufacturing. Uh, the grants um, will range from that program, some smaller grants that would be uh, $150 million to larger grants that would be uh, multi-billion dollar grants coming out of that uh, program. So it's a very significant piece. Uh, you know, if it passes, I think, you know, Ministers of Manufacturing and Manufacturing Renaissance Council will be you know, well positioned to be part of those, uh, you know, new grant funds. And so we've been really, you know, proud to work with David to start the Manufacturing Renaissance campaign that's trying to realize uh, these ideas, uh, you know, into law. Uh, so it's an exciting time uh, and really appreciate all the support that everyone on this call has, has given. So um, thank you so much, Andy. Exciting times, exciting times. And uh, hold tight. Uh, hopefully, Michelle's still on. If she had to, to dash, I'll ask you, Andy, to talk a little bit about the potential presidential visit. But I, I did want to share. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. I'm, I'm admitting people here. Um, 
th this is the website for the campaign. And this is where you can go and find out all the activity that's going on with the various bills. Uh, the campaign is at M mrcampaign.net. I'll put that in the chat uh, shortly. But this is where you can, can uh, send in uh, endorsement. You can, can uh, reach out to us if you want to become an official endorser uh, and send us a, an official letter. We're more than happy to put your logo. Uh, your church, whatever it is here on our, our sort of hall of uh, fame, wall of fame. And uh, you can also look at all the recent articles, all the, uh, some of the, you know, the activities that we've had to pass, such as uh, when we had uh, Deputy Secretary, Deputy Secretary of Commerce, uh, Don Graves addressed our group a while back. Uh, that's here. Uh, so there's a lot of activity on this. And, and Andy, if, if, uh, if it's okay, can you share a little bit about the opportunity we may have to host the president? So, no, thanks so much, Dave. Looks like Michelle had to drop. Uh, no, she's back. Oh, there so she I'll is. Michelle, oh, take okay. that on. There she yeah. is. And, and the HBCUs too, Michelle, the, the work we're doing. Sure, I'll start with the HBCUs. Hi, everyone. So uh, David and I and Andy, we're in touch with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, and particularly the president, Dr. Payne, um, who is the best person to be in touch with because she's also the presidential appointee for HBCUs. And we are always just trying to keep HBCUs in the loop and also have their endorsement. Thankfully, we already have the endorsement of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, um, and that's available on our website. But particularly, a lot of the legislation that we're advocating for provides um, a lot of historic investments for HBCUs, particularly around the areas of research and development. So we really want to be able to highlight that we've seen that Senator Raphael Warnock has been very supportive, particularly of the America's Compete Act because of the funding that it does for HBCUs. So we're excited about that. And there's also a National Black Talent Bank that's going to be launched with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. And um, we'll be meeting with the, the founder or the manager of that uh, sometime next week to discuss what that means, particularly for the manufacturing workforce. Um, and in regards to the White House, we've been in touch with the Domestic Policy Council in manufacturing. And uh, because the president is, is really trying to just show that manufacturing is rebounding, really trying to elevate manufacturing, um, we saw that he was in Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago. We may have seen his speech and he was also in Tennessee. Uh, we really just wanna keep manufacturing on the radar. So the X from the White House was that we send them any events um, particularly that our partners are doing, including Manufacturing Renaissance. And so Manufacturing Renaissance sent us an event, particularly around Women's History Month, um, to highlight a actual women manufacturing owner um, in the Chicago area. I believe it's called Hudson Premier, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so we are hopefully going to hear back from the White House, and we hope that they will take us up on, a, on an event to do that within the next two to eight weeks. So we will definitely keep you posted um, if that happens um, especially if that happens in the Chicago area. Thank yeah. you so much. And, and if it does, if it happens to come to uh, Hudson Precision uh, Products, um, we want to make sure that we uh, Minister for Manufacturing is represented. And if we do get the green light, I'll have an emergency call with all of you present to determine kind of, you know, because it, it'll be limited because of Secret Service and, you know, all that sort of thing. Uh, so we could probably only have a couple of people, but but we can discuss making sure that we're present at that and that the ministers and the work that you guys do vis-a-vis -vis manufacturing and community uh, is well represented. So thank you so much, Andy. Uh, any questions of Michelle and Andy from anyone? Yes, this is Dr. Binion. Um, I was listening in regards to some of the bills and I was also listening to the other gentlemen who the taxes are going up. And if you know, we've been advocating against that uh, with the school levies and to just really show it's nice to get the funding in, but if you can't afford it, you know, if all the funding is gonna go in taxes, then um, it's still gonna be a problem. Uh, HB, uh, I'm talking about SB 508, um, and there's another bill uh, that um, if now your taxes are gonna go up every year. Um, when taxes, if you go to articles, the Constitution, Article 10 of the Illinois State Constitution states that basically education is supposed to be free. A lot of the funding 
and a lot of the taxes, a big chunk of it is dealing with school levies and that should be free. So I would like to have more of a conversation in regards to that, if we're gonna levy and I'm, you know, we're on board uh, in regards to bills, that's something that um, needs to be addressed because even if they get a job but they can't afford to have a home uh, because the taxes are so high, um, then there's still a problem. Excellent point. Mm -hmm. Did I step on somebody there? Oh, excellent point, Pastor, and uh, an excellent segue because our next section, really, I wanted to have a quick conversation about an advocacy event that would be hosted by uh, our group here, the ministers. And there are a couple of issues on the table that you just raised, Pastor Ben, uh, and, and uh, that Craig raised with respect to taxes, property taxes, and then the connecting uh, funding to the school system so that our young people can have access to the kind of training that, that uh, Didi mentioned and that, that Madi is going to talk about after this, this next segment. So uh, Reverend Haynes and I talked about, and, and Reverend House, about a, uh, a Springfield Advocacy Day. Uh, the session ends April 8th is the last day of session for the spring. We might not be able to do something so quickly, but we could look at the fall session if we wanted to do Springfield. And then uh, I've had conversations, uh, initial conversations with Andy and, and, and others about a trip to DC as well to support the bill, support the activity and uh, march around in Congress and make ourselves heard. Just wanna hear some, some thoughts about that as a proposal for this group so that we can make our voices heard. What date were you looking at in the fall session? Uh, the calendar for fall session hasn't been finalized yet, but it would probably be late September, early October. And DC? Uh, I throw it to the group. Now, DC, of course, is a bigger logistical issue, and we probably have to try to go find funding to get us there. Uh, Springfield, we could we could do essentially on our own. Do we, David uh, Herb Brooks? Do we, David, have a lobbyist for either Springfield or Washington? Uh, I I was a lobbyist in okay. a former career, and okay. I have relationships with uh, the leadership down there. Yeah. And uh, so, if we decided to do Springfield, and and I know some of you you guys too. Father Larry, various mm -hmm. folks have relationships. I'd reach out to the leadership and, and have them host us. Uh, and I have a, a good friend that's been down there 35 years and she whispers in all the years of all the legislators, uh, mm -hmm. Nia. And mm -hmm. Nia would essentially pave the, the, the way and make sure that we have actual meetings, not just wander around in the hallways. Okay, good, good. And then so, you would be helpful with Washington DC, right? I, I'm sorry, Reverend Haynes, I missed that. I said Andy would be helpful with Washington, D.C., right? Oh, yeah. We, it, the Century Foundation has, has juice, man. They, they, we'll, we'll be yeah, good. We, we can make that happen. Uh, yeah. If we decided to do D.C., um, I, I think we, you know, we, our coalition has folks that are very, very well connected. That's good. David, I asked that question because I think everybody on this call knows by now when it comes to state and federal government, it's not what you know, but who you know. That's and those right. contacts are very important. And that's an important statement one around the hall, because it's all you're going to get if you don't have a contact or a lobbyist in those areas. That's so true. <laughs> yep. And anyone that's tried to do that, just kind of go down there. If you don't yep. have those relationships, you'll I just know. be wandering around in the halls, you know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's yeah, right. But, Thank you. but we would make sure that we get uh uh uh, a meeting with uh, President Senate President Don Harmon, with um, Chris Welch, with the various caucuses, and the various committee heads. Is that we want to focus on leadership, as as you guys know, if you've ever had to do any politics. I know Pastor Brooks, you know this. Um, it's the leadership that matters. So uh, it's nice to meet your own rep, uh, but leadership is the key to moving things. And I'm in right. conversation with a uh, uh, representative Cam um, Cam Buckner, who's the chair of the Black Caucus, uh, and he said that he would 
help us have a a uh, a full Senate and and House hearing on this issue if we gave them enough time. Yeah. Good. Okay, great. So uh, I put it in front of the group. Why don't we just do a vote? Do we want to do go after Springfield or DC? What's wrong with both? <laughs> uh, I guess we can look Money. at it. Money. Money. That there, yeah. yeah. Money. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, all things are possible. <laughs> yeah. We know this, you got it like that. We know you got it. That's right. And, and you guys know people above that can maybe make things happen. So, you know, we, we can uh, we, we can maybe have a separate meeting, Reverend Haynes, about that issue. You want to do that? Sure. OK, great. All right. Because uh, moving right along on the agenda. Um, ah, OK, Marty. It's go time for Marty Zapata. And I'm going to share screen. Um, see make sure i have the right one here's one there we are um okay so if we want to go a little down okay great so again i'm with jane adams resource corporation um, i'm sure some of you are familiar with us um, for those who are not um, we do offer free manufacturing training services um, along with wraparound supportive services, including job placement assistance. Um, currently, we are offering training in CNC operation, mechanical assembly, and welding. We do have three locations, um, one on the north side of Chicago in the Ravenswood neighborhood. We have a west side location that is housed in Friedman Seating, and then our newest location is on the south side in the Chatham neighborhood. Um, so I kind of wanted to mention what Dee Dee said, how earlier she mentioned that, you know, getting a job is the easy part. I agree 100%. Um, once someone goes through our training and they have the credentials, you know, placing them is easy. Um, the reason why we offer our supportive services is to ensure that they are then successful while working in the field and they can retain that job, um, you know, as long as possible. You know, if it's a lifetime career, great. Um, that is the goal of all of our programs uh, because manufacturing, as we know, it is skilled labor. So it's not just a job, it's a career path. Um, so again, and just to highlight our programs, they are all free. We offer the hands-on training, um, nationally recognized credentials, as well as job readiness training, uh, free financial education and coaching, um, as well as supportive services like transportation assistance. So that could be a weekly $25 gas card, a weekly venture card, um, any type of PPE that our students need for training and placement. Um, we're gonna help support them to purchase those as well. Um, so like steel toe boots, welding hood, safety jacket, welding gloves, um, and again, plenty of job readiness uh, because we wanna make sure that not only do they get that job, but they're able to keep that job and pursue you know, opportunities like promotions, um, you know, even more skills like blueprint reading, more credentials um, and things like that. And I did want to highlight um, our newest location in Chatham. Uh, you know, we're hoping to obviously work with the South Side, um, partner up and things like that. Um, we know that this is needed in that neighborhood. And this is why we chose to bring our training program to the South Side. We also currently have a stipend opportunity just at our South Side location, um, which would be a $500 stipend um, while in our mechanical assembly program. Um, but yeah, that's kind of just a quick little overview. Um, you know, all of our staff, you know, we are extremely supportive of our trainees. Um, you know, we do our best to keep them in program. Um, we do our best to support them when they graduate and when they're in the field. Um, they can always come back to us if for some reason they lost their job for whatever reason, you know, we can help connect them to a new job or if they need to brush up on their skills, you know, we'll have them come in, you know, to brush up on welding if that's the program that they um, graduated from um, and to continue um, helping with financial um coaching and things like that so it's so you know mommy, i can't say you know what, what are there's the always just so many good things to say about it 
it's a great program. We we are happy to be a partner with JARC and have been for a long time. Mar Mar yeah. Marty, what, what are the age uh, uh, categories that you, you go for? Yeah, so they need to be 18 years of age or older. And is there any issue with uh, having been uh, in the court system or have background? Yeah, so eligibility is just 18 years of age or older, um, eligible to work here, like authorized to work here in the US. Um, I always say at the application sessions that we hold every week, I let our applicants know that we are, you know, welcoming to anyone with a criminal background. Um, you know, the manufacturing sector is as well. Um, so that's definitely not going to stop us from accepting someone um, and then placing them in employment. And then for both Didi and, and you, what, what kind of wages do they come out of the training with yeah so obviously they vary um it goes anywhere from like i would say and depends on the program as well i've seen 16 dollars, 17 18 19 and even in the like 20 2021 um you know we accept those that have zero experience in manufacturing um however i will say you know those that might have like a construction background um you know other background that kind of you know, correlates with manufacturing, then maybe they may be offered a higher wage. Um, but again, the average is like 17 to $18. So starting off entry level position, um, and you know that you're only gonna get, go higher than that. And not to mention the jobs are usually always offering, you know, full benefits. Um, so, you know, retirement plan, paid time off, um, and, and all of that good stuff, health insurance. So Great. And Didi, same thing with our with with the our training as well, right? In terms of the the um the the career pathway, the entry level, uh, what kind of wages when they walk in the door, which are um way better than 15 an hour. Nothing wrong with that, but we do better. Isn't that right, Didi? Yeah, the last three placements, um, mm -hmm. no experience mm -hmm. whatsoever, fresh out of training had been at $18 an hour just because the employer said, hey, I'm desperate. If they have the NIMS credential, I'll train them. And Craig, uh, I, I'm gonna jump jump on you a bit uh, as an employer. Um, and I know there's there's some wage pressure out there, but is is that consistent with with uh with kind of what you're seeing too, Craig? Yes. Great. So you hear, you hear that, folks? Um, this pathway, uh, just coming out of training, they're uh, doing better than any of the retail jobs that you hear about, uh, McDonald's, you know, any of those places, and nothing against those gigs. You know, a lot of kids work there, and they, they, they do okay. But this is a career pathway that begins at a higher wage and continues from there. So, uh, and David, because yeah. there's so many shortages, um, the time between one position to the next, like a machine operator level one to a machine operator level two is very short. Once you master the first level, employers are almost on track to start to train you into something else so that they can bring people in on the entry level and skill them up. And with those advances come more pay. So it's an excellent time for young folks to get in, involved in manufacturing right now. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and then I also just wanted to mention too, like the um, time frame, like the timeline. So each program has like an average of the amount of, amount of weeks that it takes to complete. Um, so the shortest being mechanical assembly, it's on average 10 weeks, uh, while our welding fast track program is about 14. And then the CNC machining program is on average about 20. Um, but again, even 20 weeks, I mean, someone would potentially start their new career in like five months. Um, so great. Let's... Any questions for either Didi or Madi about uh, these exciting programs? Just a comment. I, I think this is really incredible, Mari and, and Didi, what you're doing. Um, I don't know if Andy spoke, but we're working with 13 community colleges and already working with JARC as well um, with our industry and inclusion cohort. And um, we'll love to just follow up with you both offline to see if, if love to have you as a guest speaker just to really inspire and just shows what you're doing, particularly um, with this work and workforce preparation. Excellent. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I can actually just, I know my email is right there on the flyer, but I'm not sure if these are going to get sent out to the group or if I should just leave my contact info in the chat. 
Uh, uh, yes, we'll try to do all of that. And do please leave your contact info in the chat. And I will be sending this recording out just, you know, in case people want to uh, re, re uh, visit all of this, uh, particularly some of the information that Andy shared, you know, it's kind of complicated. So it might be good to go back. Uh, anytime somebody says $7 billion, I think I want to know more about that. So uh, I encourage you guys to look. So for the two of you, Madi and Didi, what do you, what can, how can the ministers uh, and the organizations that are part of the ministers for manufacturing, how can they help get more people into these programs? Um, I mean, I would say just word of mouth. Um, you know, we do send out our flyers. Um, we, we try to, you know, fly, you do flyer days where we'll stop at, you know, alderman offices or the library and like post our updated flyers. Um, but even if they don't have a flyer, just keeping us in mind, if they are speaking with, you know, it doesn't have to be a youth. It can be, you know, someone that is maybe having a tough time. Maybe they want a career change. Um, you know, it's just attending an application session, you know, if for some reason it's not a good fit for them. Um, at least they've attended the session and they know what is out there. Um, if our training program doesn't, you know, fit what they're looking for, I mean, there's definitely one out there that does. Um, so even just, you know, being able to help someone, you know, choose their career path um, and then a free career path um, would, of course, be best. So if we, um, if the ministers decided to host an info um, recruiting day, would that be something you you all would be interested in? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely sit in. Um, you know, if it's virtual, I can of course give a brief little overview. Um, if it's in person, you know, we can talk about that as well. Um, but I would definitely, at the end of it, just encourage interested applicants to then um, register for one of our um, informational sessions, because that's pretty much where um, you get the ball rolling is attending a session and then applying for the program. But yeah, definitely happy to um, do more outreach um, with, you know, anyone on this call, or even if you have another outside partner that you think would um, benefit from, from me speaking at one of their meetings. Uh, I'd also like to point out that in the past, myself and, and uh, Torres, member of the Youth, Young Women's Factors Association has um, met with different churches, uh, ministerial alliances and things of that nature and had presentations done where we talked about how the ministers could uh, get the community involved in, in working with uh, training the youth. And we could do that. We could set something up like that. Yeah, and I'm right. down for whatever, you know, whatever y'all want me to do, I'm going to do it in person, <laughs> virtual, whatever I have to do to get the word out, you know, I, I'm, let me know. Perfect. And then any of your, uh, our partner organizations like Lawrence Hall, 100 Black Men, uh, if there are appropriate venues or events, uh, I'd encourage you to kind of keep the ministers and, and our group in mind because this is information that might be useful to some of your uh, some of the folks that you reach all right so boy we've we've done pretty good on time here um so uh it are there anything events happening um, among the the various ministers and various groups that are upcoming this is kind of you guys time to share what's going on in your world uh please do at this point No, um, Carl, I'm going to put a touch on you a little bit because I know 100 Black Men has a, I don't know what the timing is on your scholarship drives and you usually have some big event you guys are planning for. Is there anything coming up with 100 Black Men? Well, we always have our college scholarship fair that's going to be coming up in October. Uh, but most currently, you know, we focus on violence prevention. And so we've been doing uh, blood drives as well. And so our next blood drive is going to be on March 6th uh, by Rush Hospital uh, over on the west side. And so we're looking for people to come out and to be able to give blood because it's, it's very needed on the west side and south side of Chicago. And it's an opportunity to, you know, to be able to save lives. And so we're looking for people to participate. Great. How would they get in touch with you, uh, Brother Todd? I can, I can send you uh, a flyer and a link on that. 
Perfect. And, uh, and hopefully uh, folks will want to come through. Excellent. Now, uh, a lot of this is Chicago specific uh, uh, for the moment. And I have not forgotten you, Pastor Brooks, Pastor Dotson, you know, you, all y'all that are kind of out and about. Uh, we are working to make sure that we can get this programming out your way as well. So um, don't, don't feel as if uh, it's, it's uh, that we're being unfair here. Um, the, uh, it, does anyone have uh, any projects, church events, uh, community events in your area that uh, you want to make the, the group aware of? Well, yes. Uh, here at Lawrence Hall, we do a community event every Tuesday where we go out in the South Shore uh, community and we pass out lunches to the people in the community. It doesn't you don't there's no specific requirement. You don't have to um, forgive my using of the terminology. You don't have to be homeless to do to, to participate. You just have to come up and grab a meal and it's free. Um, we also do there's a COVID uh, testing table there where they're, they'll, they'll come to you and provide COVID testing. They'll also give you home testing um, kits as well. And we also pass out just other hygienal, hygienal necessities as well. Very good. Thank you, Brother Darnell. Anyone else have anything going on? Well, I'll be leaving uh, the country in uh, this Sunday, headed to Israel for two weeks and then come back. Uh, it, it, it should be an interesting trip. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, unless anyone has other stuff, we, we can, uh, we, we got through this fairly quickly since we didn't actually do a tour. So um, unless there are closing comments, I wanted to open it up for Pastor Brooks to do a closing prayer or uh, unless anyone has any final statements, anything else? I have one question. You said that you're going to be posting this uh, for later reference. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be sending it out to everyone, uh, the link to it. Um, and that way you, you, we can just kind of, you know, you'll have that available too. Okay. I just wanted to mention I'm uh, one of the village officials here where I live in the Southland. I want to be able to share some of this with the village administrator in hopes that we can gather together all of the ministers here within the Southland and share a lot of this information so we can try to spread it out uh, in these areas. Because as you know, from just from watching the news, not only is there a lot of problems with our youth in the city of Chicago, but we're also facing that problem in our South suburban communities as well. And we need alternatives uh, for these young people because we have to face the fact that all of them will not go to college. All of them will not go into the military. All of them will not by themselves try to seek um, the necessary training to make themselves um, more, uh, what can I say, marketable in the job market. And I think from all the things that I've heard on this morning would be advantageous for us to get on board uh, as, as the Southland uh, leaders through our churches, as well as through our village councils and things to encourage our young people to get involved in these things. Excellent. Also, also, Elder Meeks, we could set up uh, a meeting where we could actually come out and speak right. to your group too. That'll work. Yeah, and that's true of any uh, anyone on the call and any other pastors that are interested in working in in this, this space. Uh, we 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 have a road show and we'll come out and we'll you know do this or we do it on Zoom. However, it works best. But we we want to get this information out. So thank you for that, Pastor Meeks. Yes, sir. All right. Let's talk some more, Pastor Meeks, about this. Yes, sir, we will, especially before you go to the motherland. I've been there well, twice. Be Sunday, so. <laughs> Good stuff. All okay, right. I'll come back. <laughs> any, any other items before uh, I ask uh, 
Pastor Brooks to pray us uh, to a close. Just want to say thank you so much to Craig Freeman. I did not <laughs> yes. acknowledge my homie uh, <laughs> yep. earlier when I was speaking. Uh, Craig Freeman and Freeman Seating has provided so many opportunities for this program. It's utterly ridiculous. It is. As far yeah. as opening his shop for tours, as far as internships, we give our kids one day job shadows. We do one week spring break internships. We do summer jobs. We do after school and weekend internships. And Craig has been involved in everything. Um, his staff even calls us when there's issues with um, an employee that we refer to them so that we can intervene. Um, we can call, we have an opportunity to call that young person, figure out what's going on and help them navigate throughout that situation so that they don't get fired and that they don't have to quit. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for opening your doors to this community and helping the residents all over the city of Chicago um, with employment. I really, really appreciate all that you do. Excellent. I, I echo that too. Yep. Thank you. That's, that's, that's a little effusive, but thank you very much. And, and, you know, we need you as much as, uh, as, as you need us. And that's why this is a, a, a partnership and, and, um, and uh, let's just move oh, it forward. And, and I couldn't help Craig. I got a review. Um, I was over at the plant and, you know, they named the street right there for Craig Friedman. And I know he's such a humble guy. He's probably like, oh, David, please. <laughs> but uh, congratulations, because not only is he a hero in this work, but he's a real community advocate and, and has been recognized. And that was a mistake, by the way. It should have been named Friedman Seating, but apparently you're, you can't name a street after a company, but you can name it after a person. Yeah, so <laughs> I got a kick out of it. I knew you'd get... Did not want to be recognized for that, but I have to do it, Craig. You got a street named after you, so it's good. Um, so I want to thank everyone that's joined the call. I especially want to thank our, our guests that uh, pres presented, uh, Didi, Madi, uh, Michelle, Craig. Uh, you know, you guys have been uh, outstanding, and you are always step in when needed, and I really appreciate that because this work takes everyone. So, uh, and I really want to thank all the ministers and, and uh, representatives of organizations that care about this, these communities. You guys are, are, are you know, you're the, the lifeblood of, of change and together we can do a lot of things. So very grateful for your presence and for your time and effort. Pastor Brooks, could you take us out in prayer, please? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this day and this place, for this renaissance. Uh, manufacturing Renaissance. We thank you, Lord, that we can meet by way of social media, although we could not meet in person. Continue, Lord, with your choice blessings upon manufacturing, this Renaissance director. Everybody put their hands to the plow and do this work. And Lord, we continue to actually bind it together as we work through the pandemic to allow us to come together and meet again. Give all your traveling grace and your choice blessings. And our Lord, it's David's name we pray. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, everyone. And I'll send Amen. the uh, recording out as soon as I get it. But thank you so much. Have a beautiful weekend and stay cool. Stay, stay warm and safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Reverend Haynes, give me a call before you leave. Give me a call. Am I all? Yes, I will. Yes, thank I will. you. God bless you. All right.